So a new study came out recently looking at the effect of olive oil on cholesterol level. And it made a big splash on social media. So a lot of you guys asked me to look at the study and report back. So I went over it really carefully. I spoke to the authors. Let's take a look. So this was a randomized trial. 40 participants split randomly into two groups. Both started a plant-based diet, no animal products, but with different levels of olive oil. One group had no or as close to no oil as possible, less than one teaspoon a day. The other group had a lot of olive oil, four tablespoons a day. And this was extra virgin olive oil, and they were supposed to have it uncooked. So that's a big difference, almost 500 calories a day of oil on one group versus less than 40 on the other. So cool, interesting question. I know a lot of you guys want to see more trials of oil versus no oil. So here we are. The participants stayed on the diets for four weeks. Then there was a pause of one week, what we call a washout, where they could eat whatever they wanted. And then they switched. The folks that were on low oil previously went on high oil and vice versa. And that second period lasted four weeks again. So this is what we call a crossover trial. Self-explanatory name. Every participant starts on one diet and then halfway through switches to the other diet. Okay, so what did they actually end up eating on each diet? Well, on the high oil diet, they ate more fat, not exactly newsflash, about 800 calories a day from fat and about 400 calories a day from fat on the low oil diet. So it's about a twofold difference in fat intake. So bear in mind, neither diet was very low fat. They were supposed to maintain these, this difference in olive oil intake, but they could eat other fatty foods like nuts or seeds. Interestingly, carbs and protein were very close or almost identical on the two diets. So it was really a difference in dietary fat. Now, total caloric intake on the diets, on high oil, they reported about 1,700 calories a day. On low oil, about 1,300. So that's pretty low, 1,300 calories a day. Now, there might be some under-reporting. We sometimes see that Otherwise, 1,300 calories a day is probably not going to be sustainable long term. In terms of body weight, they lost more weight on the low oil diet. Not surprising given the difference in caloric intake. So this is a legit caveat of oil that I think everybody agrees with. Oil is very calorie dense, so the calories can add up quick, especially if one eats a very large amount of oil, as they were eating here, almost 500 calories just from olive oil. Obviously, this is not a universal, uh, absolute limitation. You can be on a diet with oil. You can even be on a high-fat diet and lose weight at the same time. But obviously, something else has to come out. In terms of the percentage of their calories that were coming from fat, on the high-oil diet, it was 49% fat. Low-oil diet was 32% fat. So again, like we said, neither one was very low-fat. Exercise, there was no significant difference between the two groups, so they were exercising roughly the same. And then LDL cholesterol, this was the main thing they were looking at. It was their primary outcome. So during the first period, first four weeks, LDL cholesterol came down on both diets. That's expected. They went on a plant-based diet. These diets are high in unsaturated fats, things like nuts, seeds, and olive oil, and high in fiber. We consistently see drops in cholesterol on these diets. And on the low oil diet, it seems like maybe a little bit stronger, comes down a little bit more. Not statistically significant between the two, but let's say it's a trend. Now, this might be because the sample size, the number of participants wasn't very large. As we said, 40 total, so about 20 per group. So maybe if they had more people, if they had a larger sample size, it would become statistically significant, this difference. We don't know, but possible. I was watching an interview that the senior author, the scientist who supervised the study, gave and she was explaining that they're gearing up to ask the same question, a similar trial, but bigger and badder. So hopefully that's going to answer some of the standing questions. Now, all of this is first period, first four weeks. Second period looked quite different. LDL cholesterol doesn't come down significantly on either diet, and the low oil no longer trends towards a stronger drop. If anything, it tends to a weaker drop. And when both periods are combined, and we just look at low oil versus high oil. Overall, there's no significant difference between the two diets on their effect on LDL cholesterol. So why do the two periods look so different? That's one of the questions that pops out of the study, and it's not entirely clear. First thought I had was maybe it's the weight loss. Maybe there's differences in weight loss between the first period and the second period, 
Maybe that explains some of the changes. But the authors did adjust their results for changes in body weight. And in fact, these bars that we've been looking at are already adjusted for body weight changes. So they at least thought about it and tried to account for that. Another kind of obvious idea was, well, they've already had their cholesterol lowered during the first period, so it's already low. No wonder during the second period, we don't see much additional lowering, right? It's, it's already low. There's not much uh, room for improvement. But this doesn't quite pan out. So I was talking to the first author of the study last night, and we were looking at the raw data. And so first period, first four weeks, LDL cholesterol comes down on both diets. This difference at baseline is not statistically significant. A bit more impressive, a sharper drop on low oil. So low oil is labeled in green. Then we have that one week pause. And then the second period where they switch, right? So the group that started on high oil after the pause, they switch to low oil and vice versa for the other group. Now notice that during the pause, their cholesterol bumps up a bit. This is not super surprising because they could eat whatever they wanted. The study was essentially on pause. So they're off the study diets. And this is by design. Crossover trials usually have a washout period. And that's because you want them to start both periods roughly in the same state. So the washout, as the name indicates, is to get rid of the effect of the first period and to get them back to baseline conditions, at least in theory. And so the interesting thing is the low oil diet, the green lines, they both start at a similar level of LDL cholesterol in both periods. This is like 111 and 109 milligrams per deciliter, pretty darn close. And yet the drop was much stronger during the first period, several fold. It's like a 20 point drop in the first period and only like three or four points in the second period. So it's not as simple as, well, cholesterol is already low when the second period starts. Obviously, there's nowhere else to go. There's got to be something else going on. Maybe it's the transitions. In the first period, they're coming off of a lifetime of the standard Western diet, presumably. On the second period, they're coming off of just a week of uh, revelry, of, of mayhem. So maybe that makes a difference, even if the, the starting cholesterol level is not very different. Or maybe there are differences in compliance. Maybe they're complying less with the study diets during the second period. We sometimes see that with trials. As the trials progress, the participants get a little more tired or they get busy and they get a little sloppy with the diets. And that could obviously affect the results. And it's something that we see, it's not rare. So this is a common trade-off that we see with crossover trials. Crossover trials are great for some things. Like for example, Individual differences, right? If we want to account for like genetic differences, for example, individual variability between the participants, because you're watching each participant on both diets, it gives you a lot of information. The trade-off is exactly this, is when the results between the two periods, first period and second period, are very different, it's hard to know exactly what's going on. There's a lot of open questions. So that's kind of the trade-off. If it does turn out that this is a, a real, a legit effect, of low oil diets, lowering cholesterol more powerfully, and even independent from calories and weight, uh, that will be a really interesting result. And it will be a scientific argument to be careful with a lot of oil, at least on these diets. I'm definitely open to that. If the data in the future confirms this, if this is robust, we'll go with that. Right now, I think it's too early to make that call, given all the uncertainties we talked about during the first period. The difference is not statistically significant. During the second period, that trend isn't even there and the two periods are so different. Hard to know exactly what's going on. TBD. Now, when we look at ApoB, if you're not a regular viewer, ApoB is a more rigorous metric of cardiovascular risk than LDL cholesterol. The result for ApoB is actually more striking. During the first period, only the low oil diet reduced ApoB significantly. Still didn't quite reach statistical significance between the two, but it got pretty close. And this is almost 10 points of difference between the two. So this could be clinically meaningful if it turns out to be real. But again, during the second period, it looks so different from the first. And when we combine the two periods and we just look at overall low oil versus high oil, there's no significant difference between the two in their effect on ApoB. I was talking to the authors and they explained that they didn't emphasize ApoB as much in the paper because the entire trial was powered, it was designed around the LDL cholesterol result. So they have a little more confidence with that one. But hopefully this is something else that can be clarified with that 
larger trial in the future. They also looked at other metrics like glucose and a few others, and the pattern was pretty similar for a lot of those. So here's glucose, for example, fasting glucose. First period, glucose comes down on both diets, and again, looks a bit more impressive on the low oil diet. Not statistically significant between the two, but a trend. But again, second period looks quite different. No significant drop on either diet. So again, this very striking difference between the two periods. Total cholesterol, pretty similar pattern, reduced on both diets during the first period, seems a little stronger on low oil, but not significant. And then second period, very different result, no significant drop on either diet. Last thing I want to point out, you might have heard on social media about olive oil raising cholesterol. A lot of people who contacted me, this was their the takeaway that they were getting from the discourse on social media around this trial. But as we saw, LDL cholesterol didn't go up on any of the diets. It trended down on both diets during both periods. Sometimes this drop was significant, sometimes it was not statistically significant, but it never goes up on either of the study diets. It only bumped up during the pause of the study, as we saw when they stopped the diets, but never during one of the study diets. So where this comes from, this idea of the cholesterol going up, is the authors were interested in looking at diet order. Does the low oil diet have the same effect regardless of whether it comes first or second? And in order to do this, in order to look at this, they were applying some formulas and they were doing some calculations with these numbers. So I'll show you this really quick in 10 seconds. If you're allergic to math, you can skip the next 10 seconds of the video, but I promise it's not gonna be too bad, so bear with me. So if you start out on low oil, that's about a 25 point drop in LDL cholesterol. Then you switch to high oil, and that's about a 10 point drop. So we take this last number, minus 10, and we subtract the first value, the value for the low oil. So minus 10, minus, minus 25. Two minuses turn into a plus. So minus 10 plus 25 equals 15. The result is a positive number. So this is the type of calculations they were doing that led to a positive number for LDL cholesterol and for glucose and for a couple of the other metrics. It's not that during the exposure to one diet, cholesterol went up. So bottom line, what they're saying with these calculations is the effect of each diet looks very different depending on the order, depending on whether each diet comes first or second. But as we said, I think this type of analysis will essentially reflect uh, this difference, this substantial difference that we see between the first and the second period. So it could be an effect of diet order, or it could be something extrinsic to the diets, like the differences in compliance that we talked about. For example, TBD. So my summary of the trial it's a very interesting experimental question. A lot of people want to see more trials looking at this question of the oil versus no oil. Very provocative findings. If indeed low oil diets turn out to be more powerful reducers of cholesterol, maybe even ApoB, uh, and even independent from calories and weight loss, I think that will be kind of a sensational result if confirmed, if the data looks strong and backs that up in the future. And it'll potentially change how we look at this. It'll be another factor that we very much bear in mind when designing diets. But I think it's really early to say. We'll see if future trials and larger trials confirm these observations or contradict. I know that sometimes it can feel frustrating when these videos are not black and white in the conclusion. This is a superfood and this is poison, right? Everything with no uncertainty. The reality is this is often how science works. The progress is slow and we look for confirmation, and we make sense of things by looking at the big picture. And I'd rather give you guys the truth, even if it's not the most satisfying in the moment, it's not going to be viral, that's okay. I do try to make the videos as simple as possible so that it's, you know, watchable, that it's not a nightmare to watch these videos. But without twisting the truth so much that it just becomes a cartoon and then it doesn't help anyone. Speaking of olive oil and vegan diets and heart disease, I recently interviewed Dr. Coldwell Esselstyn, who's one of the main proponents of vegan, very low fat, no oil added diets for heart disease patients. We agreed on some things, we disagreed on others. It was a very interesting, lively conversation. You can check that out in full by clicking on this video right here. And here's more on how to lower your ApoB with diet. A lot of actionable tips in that video. Check those out. I'll meet you over there. Take care.